Gangsters dominated various cities across the U.S. and provided this commodity. One of the most famous was Chicago's public enemy number one, Al Capone. Al Capone received the name Scarface while working as a bouncer at a bar. He made an insulting comment towards a woman, and her brother slashed his face with a knife, hence the name Scarface. Al Capone was born in Brooklyn, New Jersey, January 17, 1899, to Im immigrant Italians. He quit school in sixth grade and joined a street gang. The leader of this gang was John Torrio, the, the city's leading figure in the underworld. In 1918, Capone married Mary May Coughlin, and three weeks later, their only son, Albert Francis Capone, was born. In 1920, Capone moved to Chicago with this unruly gang. There he became lieutenant to his uncle, Big Jim Col Colosimo, who was a major Boston pimp. His other job was to convince speakeasy operators to buy illegal alcohol from Torrio at extreme prices. However, Torrio and Colosimo eventually clashed because Colosimo resisted getting into the bootlegging due to prohibition. Therefore, Torrio had him killed, making Capone making his right-wing man. After Torrio retired due to a scare by a rival gang, the business was passed down to Capone. He built a fearsome reputation which eliminated or nullified many game rivals. After Capone's power grew, so did his territory, known as the Chicago Outfit. Within two years, Capone had earned 60 million from alcohol saves and other drug rackets earned him an additional 45 million. Al Capone was officially the richest criminal in the United States. The public wanted to know, how was Capone getting away with all this? The answer is simple, bribery. He bribed the police and politicians of Chicago to keep him out of jail by investing over 75 million on such ventures. Armed thugs patrolled the election booths to ensure Capone's politicians would return to office. One of the politicians he had under his thumb was Big Bill Thompson, Chicago's 1927 mayor. He said, we'll not only reopen these places people have closed, but we'll open 10,000 new ones. Al Capone was king of the city. He was filthy rich, in power, drove in bodyguard-filled cars, and was unstoppable. If something was in, a way, in his way, he would destroy it. Over 227 gangsters were killed in just four years. It became a daily occurrence. His most famous event was the St. Valentine's Day Massacre on Valentine's Day 1929. The Moran mob was Al Capone's greatest rivalry. Al Capone tricked Moran's gang into attending a local bar, unknowing of the events that were about to occur. Seven members of the gang were machine gunned down against a garage wall by Capone's thugs posing as police officers. Moran wasn't killed, but fled out of fear for his own life. However, this wasn't how Capone was evicted. Police were unable to arrest him because at the time of the massacre, Al was strategically in his sunny home in Florida. But the law wasn't done with Capone. President Herbert Hoover hired federal law enforcement to persecute Capone. Although these untouchables destroyed his entire bootlegging business, Capone was still out of jail. On October 17, 1931, they finally got him on a tax fee and he was sentenced to 11 years of federal prison and gained another title, Alcatraz's most famous prisoner. Capone only served half of his sentence because of his good behavior and terrible health. He spent the remaining years of his life in his Florida mansion. He died January 5, 1947. Prohibition failed to keep people from drinking and distributing alcohol. It cost the U.S. millions of dollars and quickly lost popular support when the 18th Constitutional Amendment was passed. But in 1933, the 21st Amendment was passed and ratified, ending prohibition, as well as essentially ending the mass violence over illegal alcohol distribution and consumption.